Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Frozen Lady. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Magic Detective. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. You know, Blackstone, of all magicians' tricks, I think escapes and vanishings are the most interesting to outsiders. They seem to be, yes. I wish you'd tell me more about them. Oh, you're snooping on forbidden ground, Don. Those escapes are magicians' secrets. Yes, I know, but maybe that's why they're so interesting. I've told you about several of them already, Don. I know you have, but like Oliver Twist, I still ask for more. Oh, oh I know a story you've never told him, Blackstone. Oh? Which one is that, Rhoda? Remember Genghis, the Swami? I think you mean the pseudo-Swami. Well, what's the story, Blackstone? Well, there was a Mrs. Reginald Van Antwerp, the society leader. She opened a little theater on her estate for a benefit a little while ago. And the main feature of the evening was an exhibit by each of several well-known magicians. It was a contest, really, to see which magician could perform the most startling trick. The program had gone along uneventfully until the act before mine. Rhoda and I were standing in the wings watching... And now, nice people, the Swami Genghis. Tonight, I will show you a trick that will mystify all. But I must have help. Is there a young woman in the house who will assist me? Oh, come now. There must be some young lady who will allow me to freeze her in a block of ice. It will not be painful, I promise you. Uh, Emma, come here, my dear. <laughs> Genghis, this is my daughter, Emma. She'll be glad to assist you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, young lady, you will sit on this stool. <laughs> That's right. Now look straight into my eyes. Yes, into my eyes. Hypnotism, huh? It looks like it. What do you think he's going to do, Blackstone? He'll freeze her while hypnotized into a block of ice. The ice will freeze. They'll chop it open and she'll have vanished. It's a good trick. I'll say it is. I am giving you this drink, this magic drink. Mm -hmm. Swallow it all. Well, That's mm -hmm. right. Now you are going to see, to see. Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like hypnotism much myself, but then... Oh, look, Blackstone, she's unconscious. He's lifting her and putting her in that... Well, uh... it's a coffin, Blackstone. Now that's just a trick, Rhoda, to build the suspense. A very effective one. Look how the audience is taking it. You can't hear a sound. Golly, they are still, aren't they? Now Ooh. I will allow water to run into the sarcophagus of the living dead. The sarcophagus is filling, filling. Were it not that the beautiful maiden were unconscious, were her spirit not out of her body, she could not survive the ordeal. Golly, that's quite a lot, Blackstone. Mm, he's doing it very well. Amazing, I haven't heard about him before. Yeah, that is funny, isn't it? You know most of the magicians. And now, the test. I shall start the freezing apparatus, and soon the sarcophagus will be a solid block of ice with the maiden frozen within. She is freezing. She is freezing. The maiden is freezing into a solid block of ice. The ice is forming around her heart. Oh, oh, oh stop the ice freezing. Oh, stop it, I say. I can't let my daughter go through with this. It's too dangerous. Stop it. Mrs. Van Antwerp, please, before it is too late. It is too late. What do you mean, too late? You have broken the spell, Mrs. Van Antwerp. The spirit of your daughter was hovering between two worlds when you cried out. 
Your scream has broken the spell. Oh. Quick, help me, someone. Chop open the block of ice. I'm going out there, Rhoda, and help. So am I. Break open the cake of ice. Stand here by me, Rhoda. This may be serious. I'll need your help. You mean this isn't part of the act? Well, if it is, it's one of the cruelest I've ever witnessed. She's gone, Mrs. Yeah. Van Antwerp. You have murdered your daughter. I've murdered my daughter. Her spirit is doomed to hover between the two worlds forever. Unless I can call her back. Oh, call her back. Call her back. We must have seances. We must work. It may take years to undo the work you did in a single second. It may take years. Or it may be impossible. Oh, my daughter. Take my gun out of the bag out there, Rhoda. Go down into the room directly under this one and hurry. What will I do then? You know when you get there, hurry. Right, Paul. I will call to the spirits and see if somehow, someday, they will be kind and release your child. I will establish contact with the spirits. Speak to me, O oh spirit, speak. speak. We must have silence, my dear lady, complete silence. The gods do not care for crying. Spirit of the outer darkness, send back the child you have taken from us. Send her back to us. Send her back. Now, I beseech you to return this now, spirit. That's enough. Oh, Mr. Blackstone, please, Genghis says it must be quiet. Your child is safe, Mrs. Van Antwerp. You don't understand me. Grab that man. Don't let him escape. Stop him. Keep Hold him. Stop him. My only chance to call back my daughter is... Rhoda. Yes, Blackstone. Is she all right? Yeah, she's pretty badly shaken from the fall, but she's all right. What do you mean? You see, Mrs. Van Antwerp, I am a magician, too. <laughs> Quite a story, Blackstone. Isn't it? Every time I think of the sound of that Swami's voice, my blood curdles. But tell me, Blackstone, how did you call Mrs. Van Antwerp's daughter back from the spirit world? I didn't. You mean you were just uh, fooling her poor mother? Oh, of course not. Well, then well, how? Well, it's very simple, really. An old magician's trick. The daughter hadn't vanished at all. But when the block of ice was chopped open, she was gone. Yes, yeah, she was gone because she'd never been in it. What do you mean? The Swami had put her in the coffin, flooded it with water, frozen the water, and the girl had vanished. She'd vanished before the water was put into the coffin. The bottom of the coffin was a trap door, you see, that led her down into the room below. She wasn't even hypnotized. That drink of water the Swami gave her contained dope. You see, Blackstone had done this trick often. He knew what was supposed to have happened. But why did the Swami pull the gag about her spirit being between two worlds? Yeah, I bet he's wondering that himself along about now. What do you mean? Well, he's got plenty of time for wondering. Why? He's in jail. This trick of his was a very fancy kidnapping and extortion racket. He'd banish the daughter, you see, and then hold many expensive seances, paid for by the heartbroken mother, to dry and bring back the girl. Mm, well, that's one of the cruelest ideas I've ever heard in my life. It certainly is. Well, I'm awfully glad that this was another mystery that you could solve, Blackstone. Yep, it was another mystery solved by magic. And now for another trick, Blackstone, one that our listeners can perform after you tell them how. All right. Uh, tell me now, what kind of a trick would you like? Why not show us a hat trick? Uh, that is, one without rabbits. Who ever heard of a hat trick without rabbits? <laughs> Why not make it a card trick, Blackstone? Well, now, just to please both of you, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you a hat trick with a pack of cards. That sounds swell. Here's the pack of cards. Yeah, and here are two hats. Which one do you want? I'm going to use both. First, we spread the pack of cards along the table like this, uh, face down. Mm -hmm. What next? I want you each to take a card, but don't let me see those cards. Oh, I'll take one from over here at the left. And I'll take one from the center. Good. Now, while you're looking at those cards, I'm going to put the rest of the cards in a hat. Now, here it goes, the whole pack. Well, what do we do? Remember our cards? Yes, and show them to each other if you want. But don't let me see them. Uh, you bet we won't. Now, I take the hat with a pack in it, and on it I set the other hat. And now, I want you to put your chosen cards back into the pack. Well, how do we do that? The pack is inside the two hats. Well, just hold your cards face down and slide them between the two hats. Oh, like dropping a letter in a mailbox. That's huh? it. Well, here goes mine. And uh, here's mine. Now, uh, pick up the hats and shake them so you mix the whole pack. Chosen cards and all. That's a fine idea. Well, here goes. Oh, let me try a hand at that mixing done. Oh, here you are, Rhoda. Uh, 
Now, if you find those cards, Blackstone, you will be good. I'll find them and very easily. Now, hold the hats high, Rhoda. Then remove the top one. Uh, here you are. Now, I reach into the lower hat and... Yes, here's somebody's card. And here's the other. Well, my card was the six of spades. And mine was the nine of diamonds. Well, take a look at the two cards I drew. The six of spades and the nine of diamonds. Both right. One chance in 52, and he did it twice. But how did... Well, let Rhoda think it over, Don, and in a few minutes I'll be back to tell you how. I suppose you two want to know how I picked the cards from the hat. I'll say we do. Teddy has me baffled. And thousands of our listeners are probably trying the trick right now, wondering how in the world it can be done. All right, Don. When you and Rhoda were looking at the cards you took, I put the rest of the pack into the hat, didn't I? That's right. There was something else I did, only you didn't notice it. Well, how could we? We were looking at our cards. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if you had watched me. The thing that happened took place inside the hat. Here. Look at these cards, Rhoda. Why, the pack of cards is bent. That's right. I bent them when I put them in the hat. But our two cards were not bent. That's right. They weren't. And that's how I found them. And all you had to do was reach in the hat, find the straight card, and you had them. That's the trick. Remember, two cards are taken first. While people are looking at them, you put the pack in the hat. And bend it. Uh, I mean the pack. Yes, you bend the pack. Then put another hat on top. And let the people push their chosen cards between the hats, then shake the hats to mix the cards. Exactly. Then reach in the hat and find the two straight cards. It'll fool them every time. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like that trick. And now, until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. <laughs> with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Hooded Rider and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician.